Fishing games have been around for a long time, and it's not hard to see why. The experience of fishing itself is quite relaxing, and is a fun way to spend a day with friends. And that big case of beer you just happen to bring along with you. So to have that same experience in the comfort of your own home has its fans. Me personally, I've played a few over the years, like the Black Bass and the Blue Marlin on the NES, and one of my all-time favorite relaxation games, Sega Bass Fishing with that one being a huge hit in arcades and at home due to its emphasis on arcade fun, as opposed to the simulation style that most fishing games went for. Well, the big green is no stranger to fishing, as there are a few games on the console. But today, we're just going to focus on two of them, and for good reason. Well, for whatever reason on this planet, both Capcom and Atlas, two publisher-slash-developer companies who have brought us so many iconic franchises like Mega Man, Resident Evil, and the Shin Megami Tensei series respectively, decided to make fishing games, a genre they've never touched before exclusively for Xbox. And normally I'd just quickly glance these separately and move on, maybe as mini-sodes or part of the sports showcase. But today we've just got to look at these back to back and see if they're any good because, I mean, come on, it's fishing games from Capcom and Atlas. This should be interesting. First, we'll check out Capcom's attempt with, and I'm not making this title up, Procast Sports Fishing Game. Yes, game is part of the title. And if you think that's pretty goofy, you should hear Japan's title, Lake Masters Bass Fishing Game. We're in for a treat, aren't we? Right off the bat, there are two modes to play. You'll find this out because the announcer gladly proclaims it. Let's fish for bass in two separate modes. Welcome to a new kind of fishing game. Even though in essence there are three. First you choose a character to play as out of three. There's the young Albert Wesker looking American, the Barry Burton looking German, and the sort of Jill Valentine looking American girl. I say that because her default name is Jill. From there it's on to the modes. Arcade mode has you competing in tournaments where you must catch as many fish as possible in the time limit to progress, having infinite tries if you don't make it. Simulation takes a more serious approach and has you catch fish to earn currency like points that you can spend on equipment at the shop, gain some expert tips, and pay entry fees for tournaments, like the kind in arcade mode. Lastly, there's free fishing where you can pick a character, stage, time and weather settings, and just fish with no constraints. As you're watching the footage of this, you may be asking yourself, wow, this looks like Sega Bass Fishing, and you'd be 100% correct as Procast Sports Fishing Game is an almost exact clone of Sega's hit angling classic. It controls the same, has the same camera angles, and even a sort of annoying announcer. To its credit, the fish do look pretty good, and the levels and three characters are also nicely designed. And the music, while feeling like it doesn't belong in a fishing game at certain points, is okay. But, at the end of the day, Capcom essentially made their own pseudo-bootleg of Sega's game, and you know what? I'm okay with it. Yeah, there's not much to do besides those modes, and there's not a lot to unlock, but to be fair, that was kind of the same case for Sega Bass Fishing. Well, the first one. I'm not sure about the sequel or Sega Marine Fishing, as I don't remember them too well. It was the fun that mattered overall, and even with a few hiccups, mostly with the fish's AI, Capcom's attempt is a fine substitute since Sega didn't put their game on an Xbox until the 360. Overall, if you want a fun arcade fishing game on the big green, you can't go wrong here. As for Atlas, how does their attempt, Pro Fishing Challenge, fare off? At first glance, it looks like Pro Fishing Challenge might be just like Capcom's game. There's two modes, Tournament, where you compete to win first place by getting the biggest total weight of fish caught, and Free Fishing, where you can just fish at your leisure. One thing you'll see that Pro Challenge does better is letting you customize your own character with a variety of looks and clothes, with more that can be bought at the shop. However, this game is definitely not like the other. You see, Pro Fishing Challenge decided to go in more of a simulation route. 
This means you can have your own custom tackle setups that can be upgraded by buying stuff at the shop with your tournament earnings, purchase different boats which you actually drive around giant lakes as opposed to small areas, and instead of seeing you lure in the water and waiting for fish to bite, you use a radar to see where the little fellows are hiding. Another thing you'll see in the main menu is a tutorial, and you most definitely will need it as casting, reeling, and hooking fish is more complex than Capcom's, and, well, even Sega's fishing games. With pressure-sensitive button presses and indicators that feel more at home with an action game and will kind of confuse you at first. After taking the tutorial, I was able to kind of get a feel for the game, but even then it just didn't have the same fun appeal for me as the other one did. Granted, that boils down to me enjoying a more streamlined experience, and this is definitely for the more experienced and active anglers. I will admit that it's cool that there is a database for all the fish and equipment in the game, and you unlock things by achieving certain requirements. Plus, the fact that you can not only buy but sell things in the shop is pretty handy. There was also a multiplayer mode where you could go against other anglers to see who was the best, and, well, I'm sure that was a popular time back then. Visually, pro fishing also looks pretty good. The water effects on the lakes are nicely done, and the surrounding background areas like trees, docks, and buildings do fit in nicely. As for the characters, or character, there's not much to say except they're okay. I mean, it's your customization. It's however you want them to look. For audio, there's not much music, but what's here is a selection of rock tunes that kind of feels odd in a fishing game. Well, as for VO, well, there really isn't any. I have to admit that between this and Procast Fishing, I enjoyed Capcom's game more due to it being less of a sim, and because of that, I didn't play this one for very long before I had my fill. But this does not mean that Pro Fishing Challenge is a bad game. Actually, it's pretty good for what it is, a fishing simulator. For those who are true fishing fans and love a more realistic experience, this one's for you. Of course, compared to the other fishing games on Xbox, I'm not sure how this one stacks up, but so far it is a well-done sim. Overall, it all boils down to preference here. Go with Capcom if you're one of those who yearn for the arcade action Sega provided, or go with Atlas for a more rooted and serious experience. And that's all I can really say about them. Again, I only gave them this kind of video because Capcom and Atlas made fishing games on the Xbox. On top of that, Pro Fishing Challenge was only released here in the States, while the other one did come out in Japan. I mean, how crazy is that? Alas, both companies never tried their hands on full-on fishing games again, as far as I could find anyway. But still, I have to give them credit for trying something new. I guess if you wanted to go crazy and experiment, well, there's no better place than the Big Green. Huh. Capcom and Atlas making fishing games. I thought I'd never see the day. Well, there's not much left to say except, and with that, this is the Dolly Popka, and as always, stay green, my friends. I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and want more of me and the Big Green, then click that subscribe button and the bell to get notified when new content arrives. I want to say a special thank you to my patrons for helping not just the channel grow, but me as a creator. You have my forever thanks. If you're interested in the channel and would like to help it grow further, consider becoming a patron today. For the cost of a soda or an item on the dollar menu, you can help myself and the channel provide the best source of big green programming and more. Once again, all the thanks and love.